All right, guys, it is now 8 o'clock. Um, so I'm just go ahead and get things rolling here. All right, so hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I do want to apologize about having to shift the date and time. I had some family medical things come up that I couldn't really work around. They were out of my control. And I just wanted to make sure that the Hangout was at a time that I could actually be prepared for and give it my full attention. So I, I do appreciate everyone's understanding and I hope if you're not able to make it, you're uh, watching it at a later time. Um, so before I jump into the questions that were asked, I want to mention two things. Uh, first, I want to mention that um, these past eight weeks, uh, myself, I've just been trying to maintain my weight as I wanted to get through my final semester. Uh, now that it's over, uh, I've started dropping my calories back down again uh, in hopes of moving everything you know, on a downward trend. And I feel it was important to bring that up so you can kind of see that I'm going through the same thing you guys are going through. And uh, for some reason, I decided to, uh, to do this right before holiday week. Oh, smart move there. Um, I'm sure that sounds sarcastic, but I'm, I'm being serious. Um, honestly, I think the mentality of starting right away and not delaying and saying, oh, I'll do it after the holidays or I'll do it on the new year is the quickest way to stay in your good habits and get away from that mentality of being off the wagon because it's a holiday. Um, so if you follow me on MyFitnessPal, it's just MyFitnessPal.com slash Chuck Gross. You can see that my calorie goals have dropped and will likely be dropping again. Um, if you don't have access to something where you can see my daily weigh-ins and you think that would be helpful to you, helpful to you, please let me know and I'll make sure you can, I'll put them in a document and share it out so you can see it. Uh, so just let me know if you can't. Um, basically what happened is I dropped calories and the scale goes up four pounds. So like I said, I know many of you have seen similar things. Same thing happens to me. As soon as I drop my calories, I start to retain water because the body fights back. Uh, it doesn't like that. So I'm right there with you. I, um, like I said, I, I cut the calories and like I woke up my, I couldn't, could barely get the wedding band off my finger this morning. I was very bloated. So that's what happens. Um, the second thing I want to mention, and I've mentioned this a couple times before is that with the holiday or holidays coming up, um, I want to repeat the idea of a single meal event, uh, meaning that for holidays and parties, uh, they themselves don't need to be 24 hours of doing the opposite of your new good habits. So one approach is to treat the holidays as a single meal event, meaning if you're going for Christmas dinner, it doesn't mean you need to gorge yourself for all of your meals that day. Uh, for most of the, of the upcoming holidays, um, my plan is to skip breakfast, eat mostly protein and veggies, and then enjoy myself without stress or guilt. I actually successfully managed to do that this past year uh, without any holiday weight gain. And it took me five years of learning what not to do to finally figure it out to the point where I was still able to enjoy myself. I didn't track every day, but I was able to get through without like, you know, gaining 15, 20 pounds. That would, that would be the norm because I would go from strict before the holidays and I was so strict up to the holidays that I just went crazy. And, you know, I, I saw 20 pounds get added on in a week and a half. So I, I've kind of avoided that learned from my failures and I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, you, you don't really need to um, specifically track on like Christmas day. You don't need to skip breakfast or eat all protein. You can just eat what you'd normally eat with your new good habits and then eat, you know, eat a, the meal at Christmas or whatever and enjoy it and you know, have some cookies, whatever. That's fine. Um, but as, as we know, doing that can make the scale bump up temporarily. So similar to Thanksgiving, um, if you would rather not do a weigh-in for the week because of the holidays, please let me know in advance. So I'm, if you do that, I won't send you a message on Sunday saying, hey, did you submit an update this week? How's it going? What's going on? Please keep me in a loop. So if you'd like to skip a, a, the weekly weigh-in this week due to the holidays, please let me know. And the same will apply for the next weekend for New Year's. Just please let me know it's not a problem. Um, one thing I'm, I'm thinking about doing is uh, starting in the next year after this, this holiday season's over is uh, just adding into the weigh-ins and updates something like a weekly adherence just where uh, it's dual purpose. For me, it would kind of let me know um, how you did with your tracking, meaning is what I'm looking at in my fitness pal accurate? Did you adhere rather well? Did you slip up? Um, that helps me help you, but that also lets you reflect back on your week with your pro uh, progress. So uh, I'll have some more information about that as I get sooner, get, as we get closer to when I'd actually be asking you guys to do that. Uh, so with that said, um, if you have any questions or need help with your holiday planning, 
uh, in advance, please let me know as soon as possible. Um, maybe something that would be, be helpful to discuss in a group. If not, if you just want to discuss it with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine too. I'd like to help you guys as much as I can be able to enjoy the holidays, but also not feel guilty about it after the fact and feel like you've erased your progress because it is possible to do that. It's possible to enjoy yourself, have a good time, you know, not specifically abstain, but it's also possible to do that without binging and without undoing everything you've worked, ever, you guys have worked so hard at. So let me know. So on to the questions. Um, the first question comes from Jess, and she says that she's noticed after losing four pounds, she became so afraid that she wouldn't be able to lose the next pound that she gave up and then slipped backwards. Her mind keeps playing in repeat. What if I can't lose that next pound or the pound after that or the next five pounds or the next 50 pounds? How have you or other people pushed through that fear of failure or fear of success? What do I do to stop that way of thinking? Uh, well, this type of struggle and this way of thinking is normal. I know my wife has a very similar mindset when it comes to fitness and changing the norm where anytime that you're kind of upsetting the apple cart, upsetting the norm, where things change, there's a lot of fear involved. Um, for women, I think a lot of that is like, oh, are my breasts going to shrink? Do I need to buy new bras? Do, you know, does my wardrobe need to change? What if I buy a whole new wardrobe and I throw in my old wardrobe and then I have then something happens and I slip up and I have to go back to the old wardrobe where it's this chain of um, uncertainty regarding the future. And that's perfectly understandable. Um, I think a lot of that has to do though with having faith in the process. Uh, realizing that it's a lifestyle change and not a diet or fad that you have to complete or get through like I'm going to do this for uh, I'm going to do X on Y date at which point I'll have a cheese Z meaning you, you're going to do this program for three months and I'm going to lose 35 pounds and then you just revert back to the old ways and it doesn't work that way and part of the reason why most people have that mindset is because of all the fad diets that are out there that have basically fed you that lie forever. As long as marketing has been around, it's you go to the supermarket and you're inundated with magazine covers that basically tell you that you can do something that's extreme, that's extreme for a certain period of time and see certain results. But that gives you a short-term gain and it's not sustainable and you go back to your old ways. That mentality, because we everyone wants the quick, easy solution that doesn't require change, like real change. Um, so that part of your mind that still thinks maybe there is something out there that's quick, easy, and doesn't require real change is fighting against the slow march of what actually is the process, meaning every fad diet out there so far seeks to conceal the fact from you that you reduce calories as the primary mechanism of moving the scale weight up or down. You, you reduce calories to move the scale down, you add calories to move the scale up. It's it's really that simple. It's not easy though. Simple, not easy. So you're kind of been inundated with that mindset of simple and easy should be the way, but it's it's not easy. And there's no solution that's gonna to do it for you quickly. So that that is normal, but I think focusing on the fact that it's not some fad that you have to get through to complete X number of weeks, that it's gonna take time. It's a slow process and the change itself is not solely on the scale, the change itself is in your habits and your mentality and the way you approach things and the way you view food, not as black and white, this is healthy, this is unhealthy. Um, it, it should be that you know some foods are more healthful, meaning they'll keep you full longer, they'll give you more vitamins and minerals, but if you fit in foods you also like that don't have that effect of being full and having vitamins and minerals, you have balance. And that therefore that's that balance allows you to kind of be in that zone where you're able to gradually and slowly lose weight that you can repeat that forever until you were where you feel you need to be for health reasons. So part of that acceptance is knowing that there's going to be weeks with progress. There are going to be weeks with no progress and there are going to be weeks where you undo. It seems like you undo progress where you slide backwards. So what really matters in the end is that you trust the process, that you learn every single time you have a misstep. So if you feel like you messed up, stop, evaluate what went wrong, write it down, think about what you can do differently. That Therefore, every single time you met, you feel like you messed up, 
you get stronger because you've learned from it. It's not just something that you're repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. And it's possible that it's likely you'll never be perfect. No one's perfect. I'm not perfect. I mess up all the time, all the time. But I make sure I learn from that. that therefore, you're always moving forward. So once you learn from your missteps, you should celebrate your successes when you have them, especially your non-skill victories. Um, you know, keep learning new habits that advance you towards your health goals and just keep moving forward. I, I know it's kind of cliche to say that this is a marathon, not a sprint, but it's really true. Uh, and that's why it's vitally important that you enjoy the journey because in many ways the journey you're taking is the destination. So when times are tough and you're struggling to push through that fear, be it fear of success or fear of, um, fear of failure, remember that the scale, what the scale shows us is not a measure of our success or failure and that really the goal is not to move the scale down but to be healthier, to implement healthy lifestyle changes and habits. And the side effect of those would be that the movement, the scale moves downward. Um, I know I've said it before, but I wish there was a way to entirely do away with the scale for, for people. Um, and that is an option for some of you if, if you feel that you're uh, confident enough in the process at this point, that if you want to go measurements only or work with me on another metric like um, my current gene size is this, I want this to be loose on me and that be your metric. I'm okay with that. You just have to let me know um, and we can talk about it so that we're, we're picking something that's uh, measurable and that you feel would let you see progress enough to keep you motivated because that's important. Um, please let me know if you want to go that route, but I said, like I said, I feel it's important that you are already trusting in the process and you've already had enough success that you feel you can just kind of turn that on. So if you want to put the scale away and work with me on that, um, just please let me know and we'll talk about it. All right, so um, the second question comes from Jess and she says that she's really into fitness DVDs. Uh, she wants to know how often she should switch DVDs or exercise routines in general to prevent plateauing. She noticed with, with her current workout DVD, she's sweating less and less each session, but wants to get as much as possible from that workout before switching. Uh, so to answer this question really depends on the type of exercise you're doing. So for a cardio-based exercise program or routine, which is what I'm assuming those aforementioned fitness DVDs are, uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't particularly favor cardio as a means of re you know recompositioning your body is that your body quickly adapts to cardio. Um, and it's harder to add resistance to cardio in that um, the way you would do that would be adding generally adding more time onto it and you know we're all busy it's it's harder to add more time to a workout than it is to add resistance however um the way you can kind of get around that is rotating between cardio related exercises so as you're adapted to one you switch off and move on to another um so that therefore you're not needing to increase the amount of time being spent you're only needing to kind of switch between things and not get bored so if you're following a DVD program, I would hope that it would include some progression built in so they can kind of move you through it. Uh, but if it doesn't, once you start to feel like you're not getting much out of it, you can certainly try something else. Um, when it comes to cardio like that, unless you're training for a specific goal that's cardio related or a specific event like a Tough Mudder or a 5K, something like that, it, it really doesn't matter as long as you feel that what you're doing is giving you, you know, a good sweat or a good, is good usage of your time and that you're not bored. One exception to that is gonna be light intensity cardio. That is a single intensity for the entire duration. And that's like light intensity, steady state cardio. An example of this is what I do, and it's watch Netflix while pedaling on an exercise bike. I prefer that because it's multitasking, but my secret is that I'm incredibly lazy. So if I can do something that kind of lets me turn my brain off and do as many things as possible while doing it, I'm going to go that option even if it takes me a little bit more time. Meaning, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I know in the last hangout I mentioned uh, like uh, barbell complexes. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, everyone in this house is still sick again it seems. Um, yeah, so that, that's an example of multitasking where I can um, catch up on some Netflix shows and I can get some exercise in even though that I would probably have a better uh, investment of my time doing something like a, uh, intervals or something like that or running hills 
because the the uh, gains in fitness and things like that would be greater. But at the same time, I'm also catching up on my Netflix. So, so it works out for me and it's not, you know, not like hard work. So that that is a, that is an option too. Um, now for strength and weights based training, the opposite is true. You want to stick to a program as long as humanly possible um, because with the weight you do, the volume, meaning your sets and reps, or how you progress, meaning instead of adding more time, you can stick to your same sets and reps and increase the weight. And then once you've kind of maxed out the weight, you can then increase the sets and then you can increase the reps and keep going. Um, so the odds are once you outdo the weights you have, and you can't foreseeably add more sets or reps due to other constraints because of, you know, you know for example, there's going to be a point where adding more sets and reps is going to take more time. You run into the same problem that cardio does. That's when you'd want to look for alternative exercises that are more difficult, uh, or at that point, you might want to upgrade your weights. Be it if you're at a gym, you're probably not going to run out of weights at a gym, but if you're at home, if you have dumbbells, it might be time to hit up Craigslist and look for some additional ones or something like kettlebells. <laughs> so the example exercise in this case would be like goblet squats. You're going to eventually reach a point where you can't either get a heavier dumbbell into place or you've run out of heavier dumbbells for you to do the goblet squats with. So at that point, your options would be um, find um, heavier weights going from there, or if you have the heaviest weight you can, just can't get it up to the, where it needs to be for the goblet squat position, you can switch to a single leg variation um, you know, something like a uh, Bulgarian split squat or a single leg lunge, something like that where um, you'd have, you know, both dumbbells of a weight, but you'd only be exercising one leg at a time. So at that point, you can, we can talk about the specifics of, hey, Chuck, I've um, <coughs> reached the peak of what I can do with this ex exercise with the weights that I have. What are my options? And we can kind of take it from there. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, all right. So that is, those are the two pre-submitted questions I have. So I'm going to check around and see if anyone asked any more. <coughs> and I apparently should have made some tea or something for my throat. All right. I don't see any asked in the hangout itself. And let me just check on the group. I am not seeing any, and uh, and I realize that partially that could be to doing, doing to have, or that could be partially due to me having to have to move the times. And again, I'm very sorry about that. I hope everyone understands. It's been a rough week. Um, all right, so I don't see any additional questions being asked. All right, so we will leave it at that. Uh, just to wrap up, um, I wanted to say. That I wish everyone a happy holidays. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Um, hope everyone has a great week. Uh, if you need anything, please do post in your groups or contact me directly, and uh, I'll help you out. And we will, uh, I'll, next Monday is my daughter's sixth birthday, so I will be going out that night and having a party. So I, I'll probably shoot for Tuesday next week if, if that works. So we'll go from there, and I'll let you guys know over the weekend when that will be. All right, so happy holidays, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.